fingerprinted. Uh, he came to the podium. We, we spoke first. He came to, to, to make some uh, w announcements right outside uh, Trump Force One. His mugshot was released that night. Our ratings exploded highest ever on Newsmax. I just want to say, whatever's going on, America wants to know how Donald Trump is. So tell us, how is he in the five days or so since we spoke to you? Well, he's doing well, Eric. You know, it's not supposed to be this way, right? But we've gotten sort of used to this after seven years, you know, with Russia, Russia, Russia. They wanted to try me for treason. It's sort of like, oh, a death penalty case. It's like Tuesday for us uh, at this point. And you see what the Democrats are doing. It's become so flagrant with each indictment. Uh, his poll numbers go up because everyone understands exactly what's going on. I, I said it then, and I'll say it again. That was really before we even saw the mug shot on Thursday. I said, you know, if they do it, I think they're making a huge mistake because that will become one of the most iconic photographs in American history. And it has. Uh, people are seeing it. It's spreading. Uh, you know, it'll be one of the most viewed images likely ever because of technology and the way that that spread. But people understand what's happening to their country and they're losing it. And if the Democrats uh, and the corrupt politicians in places like Fulton County, you know, they have to pick those venues just like they're picking their corrupt prosecutors who will make whatever case they can for the Democrats to be able to keep power. It's so flagrant. People understand what's going on. And if they can do it to Donald Trump, they can do it to anyone. And more importantly, they've shown that they will do it to anyone. It's amazing. Um, I want to get to the, the, the mugshot in a second, because Elon Musk tweeted that it was getting 10 million views per hour. 10 million views per hour. So I think you're right. That, that will be, forget mugshots, it will be the most iconic picture ever, as you point out. Don, take a look at this timeline that we, we put together, and I want the people to, to note a couple, a couple of dates there. One of the dates, the first one, again, yellow are, are court dates, and blue are election events. Let's call them election events, because yeah. uh, look at the, the first one, January 15, 24, a court date the exact same day as the Iowa caucus. Not a primary, but the first one, the Iowa caucuses. Same exact date. And then jump to March 4th, 2024, yellow at the bottom. It's the trial that was just announced today coincides with the day before Super Tuesday, the most important day in GOP primary of, of in four years. Do you think there's any coincidence on the dates that they're picking okay. to, to try I, your I father? I definitely don't see any coincidence. Of, co <laughs> of course there's coincidence. Just like every indictment literally came uh, literally the day after Joe Biden or Hunter Biden were linked to a bribery scheme or further corruption or a bad ruling or a cover up by the weaponized Biden DOJ. I mean, all of this is designed, you know, the whole narrative, I think, it, you know, the DeSantis campaign narrative, they want Trump to be the nominee. Well, they're doing everything possible to prevent him from being the nominee because they understand that he's the threat to their power. He's the threat to the deep state. He's the threat to the uniparty and to the Democrats. All of the national polling shows that Donald Trump is the only guy actually beating Joe Biden, which was the narrative of all of those other campaigns, except now. Once they've gotten to know the other candidates, you know, they're not doing so hot. They've gone down. People know Trump is the only way to stop this insanity from happening. And guess what, folks? The Democrats know it, too, which is why they're trying to do it. I mean, Super Tuesday, that's 12 primaries in one day. Yeah. So the day before, that's not just taking Trump out the day before you, because you can't be in 12 places at once, but you got to actually campaign and be in all of those states in the weeks prior. So they want him preparing, not out campaigning, not out debating. But again, I think like the bug shot, it was designed to embarrass. It was designed to hurt Trump. It was meant to be, you know, a nail in the coffin, so to speak, of the campaign. But it had exactly the opposite effect because people have become accustomed to this lunacy. They seek through it all. They're so much smarter uh, than the people in Washington, D.C. want to give them credit for. They get it. They see it. And they're supporting Trump even more than they ever have, because they, too, do not want to risk losing their country. And they realize that's exactly what's on the table right now, Eric. So a phenomenon that happened that I didn't see coming, I, I, I don't know if anyone really saw, you may have seen it, but after the mugshot, over the weekend, there, the, the, the African-American community, the black community, is rallying behind Donald Trump. And they're pointing to the mugshot, saying, look, 
We've been saying this all along. We've been doing getting what Trump, the, the treatment Trump's getting now yeah. all along. It's, it's, it's a phenomenon. I'm sure Fannie Willis and Chutnik and the rest of them never saw coming. Alvin Bragg, go ahead. Yeah, well, listen, you, you saw this, the, the crowds screaming for the motorcade. I mean, they were for Trump in like Fulton County, which let's just say it wasn't prior, but they get it. I, it was interesting, Eric. I spoke on Friday night, uh, you know, at, at the Reawaken tour out in Las Vegas. Uh, there were 5,000 people under a tent. And the, the people that actually struck me the most were not people in attendance. It was the security guards at the event, a group of them, and, and on like three separate occasions, African-American men came up to me. They go, hey, man, we're never voting for that other guy. We get all of this stuff. It was like they were going out of their way to let me know that they understood exactly what was going on. And I was like, man, you know, and I get, I get it. Like Republicans have talked about this forever. You know, maybe one day, you know, people will realize that, you know, the Democrats have literally done nothing to help the African American right. community. If anything, they've done incredible and they, perhaps they, in many cases, irreparable they, they, damage to those, to that community. These guys got it, man. They, they went, it was, I was just like, wow. You yeah. know, when I see stuff and you hear about it all the time and I'm not usually swayed by, so this one was palpable. It was different. Uh, it, it was different. And I think as they see it further play out, uh, that, that could be a game-changing demographic. I'm sure that will be a demographic that will be attempted to be weaponized. I just think, especially, again, with the men, uh, they're going to see through it because, you know, they, they've, they've been dealing with yeah. this for a long time. So the African-American community is saying now we've been taken for granted all along. You have expected our vote all along, and this time may be different. Don, about, just about a minute or so, some, a phenomenon also I didn't see coming. Since the mugshot and the failed Fox debate of last week, the two events, the polls have shifted. Now, they're, they're, but I saw a New York uh, Post poll, I saw an AP, Associated Press poll, um, and one or two other polls that now have, for, yeah, Trump is widening against the rest of the field. That's no surprise since those things. But the surprise is almost all of them, every single one I've seen since, has Trump beating Joe Biden. There were both sides of that aisle prior to the mugshot and the failed Fox debate. What do you say to that? Yeah, 100 percent. First, I think they see some of the candidates. They saw Ron DeSantis. They saw him waffling, looking probably for his donors to see how he could answer perhaps the most basic question of anyone who would be a conservative right now in terms of the weaponization of government. Uh, they saw him sort of plagiarize the Trump campaign, talking about a nation in decline. I mean, not an original thought on there, but you just saw a forced delivery, like it just a puppet. You see the sort of the Fox News doing whatever they can. You know, I, I, I actually I haven't even posted it online. I took a screenshot of the Fox News. You know, DeSantis is making a comeback on Trump like the day after. And like literally just read the comments. When I got to it on like Saturday, there was like 4000 comments being like, you guys are just so full of it. You can't even pretend to not be trying to boost your little puppet. The American people get all that. They see that. They care about what's going on in America. They care about our border. They care about the fentanyl crisis. You know, they care about maybe, I don't know, just prosecuting the case against Joe Biden and actually doing something with that, which yep. wasn't even covered at that debate. Yep. They get that they yeah, have that, been manipulated Don, that's by a conservative problem. media, which is why they're going elsewhere. That's, that's a problem. I, that's a problem I had with the debate going back, looking, they talked about UFOs. They talked about, you know, the song, yeah, I mean, I, I, Oliver's song, that's fine, but they didn't talk about prosecuting Joe or Hunter Biden. I got to go, Don, yeah. we're out of time, but appreciate you very much and uh, best to 45 and maybe 47. Donald Trump Jr., thank you. Thanks a lot, Eric.